Hello guys, welcome back. Fishing up at the Gosport Ferry today for a couple of hours. It's nice and sheltered at the moment. The wind is beyond these buildings here, so I've got a lot of shelter. Just out here is the main channel of Portsmouth Harbour, and this gives me an opportunity to fish really close in and be in very deep water. So say it brings in the battleships up here, so it's definitely it's definitely a deep section of water to be fishing. Likely the catch here is a couple of flounders, maybe some white in. Well, more than likely, definitely white and pouting, possibility of a dab or place. The rig what I'm using at the moment, I'm using an up and over rig, I'm using ragworm and lugworm and I'll show you how I'm baiting up. So I keep them on these Tronics rig winders just to keep them tangle free. Now this rig in particular is one of the rigs what I use for place fishing and whatnot. It's a variation of the Portland rig. There's about a 15 foot length of line it's a running pulley, it's a running ledger basically with a 15 foot snood on the end of it. So we've got 60 pound for the rig main body, coming off onto a swivel here with 40 pound main body. And about nine foot, eight to nine foot line. And attached a little swivel, some beads there just for the place or whatnot. Attached to a smaller swivel, and a short link here with some 20 pound snood line with a size two hook on the end. It's a really long rig and it gives you the benefit of being able to fish a run and leisure but it's all clipped up all aerodynamic brilliant for casting at range so i'm using a impact lead always make sure you pinch the wires back in on themselves just gives a snug fit Now this top end is where it clips onto the main line off your reel. It's actually a curved link, so you attach the line over, tension everything up, clip it into the impact lead, and it's up and over, and it keeps it very aerodynamic and easy to reach and cast with. So on this rig here, just beat up a little ragworm. single worm on there see what it's about we're fishing at high water and we're fishing all the way down as it ebbs off so that's how we're going to fish this one second rig what i'm using is a rig what i've been asked to make and i will be making it and showing Ragster off WFC how to make his own. It's a pretty wishbone rig. I'm using the beads today because I had all this set up the other day and may as well use them at the moment. Yeah, there's a chance of a flounder out there. So with this rig in particular, so as I say, it's a pulley rig. So if you ever use a pulley rig, you understand how it works. It's a swivel, touch 60 pound main line here, a bead just there, a running swivel, it runs not fixed, it's running up and down this main line with another bead on the other end. This is where you attach the this is where you attach the swivel to the main line. And on this bottom end here is where the lead link is. And we clip a lead in there. It's got a five ounce one at the moment. Again, I'm using the impact leads because of the way that I built the rigs. I haven't got a bait clip actually at the bottom, so I use the bait clip what's already built into the lead. 
you know, there's no reason why you can't use uh, impact lead or an imp bait shield. It's just what I prefer and I find it works really well for me. So bending the wires in again, just to make sure it's all nice and snug. The reason I'm using grippers down here, although you probably don't really need to, I'm trying to whack it as far as possible into that main channel. Really deep waters, I say, quite close in. At 100 yards cast, you're probably fishing in about 60 meters of water. So really worth doing. This end, we're going to be using two baits. This is pretty wishbone, so there's two hooks there. Use two different types of bait. We might fancy a ragworm, we might fancy a bit of lugworm. This is still a bit frozen at the moment. This bait here, I'm just going to use half a black lug on there and do the usual twisting around. Keep that feeding up the line and it should present well in the water. Always make sure your hook points are clear. There we go. And I fish a single ragworm on the other one. Just find his head. You don't need to be forceful with them. They just slide straight up the line. The less panicky you are, they tend to wiggle their way on the hooks, definitely when you've got sharp hooks. Just be light, you don't need to squeeze the death out of them. Keep persevering, just keep changing the ranges from fishing at about 100 odd yards out. And every time I keep reeling in, there's loads of these little white rags that are attached to the gripper. I don't actually think you need grippers up here at the moment, the tide's not pushing that hard. Ragster off WFC fishing wanted to know what rig I was using while I was at East Knee and how to build it. So, as you show you components you need, well, the components you, you don't have to have every single part of this, you know, you can change it up so I was using an impact lead which has the clip already built in there so I don't need to be using lead links or anything like that some 60 pound shot leaders my main rig body some 40 off the first new then you need two swivels two larger swivels a lead link and a couple of beads and away you go so here we go with this using 60 pound main line on the body I'll take it Arm spam just like this. Clip it off. Tie myself. Lead link onto here. And using a half blood knot, so about four or five turns on there. Another one. Pop that in. Pull that nice and tight. This bit always helps. What I'm using is a couple of beads, a couple of smaller beads, two out. Using two of these, just sliding one down. It's just to protect against the knots and the links. Uh, attach a swivel, free running, just slide that down the line. Another little bead. And I'm going to attach a swivel, larger swivel, 
and the same again, five to six turns. And away you go. Pull that nice and tight. Snip off the tag end to keep it nice and neat, not too close. Gonna want to leave a couple of mil on there just for during the cast, might slip. And then what I'll do is use a 40 pound line. So I'm gonna tie another half blood knot, probably about six turns on this one because it's slightly smaller diameter and Ooh. So pull that nice and tight. Trim the tag end off. And I'll get about a couple of inches, like four, four inches max. Pull that down, around about there. I know it's way above where the lead link's gonna go. Snip. Now use a smaller swivel. Tie another blood knot, six sort of turns. A well, half blood knot, should I say? Ooh. Then I'm going to snip just to tidy it all up. And the next bit of this rig is what I was using is 20 pound, always like my amnesia. It's the white colour line, clear line. And pull that through. They've got a decent length there. So about 10 to 12 inches either side of the line. Snip there. And what I tend to do is just bite this end so it's always attached. For this purpose, I'm not going to put all the beads on. I'm just going to, you always do need, because this is running as well, is to use just sorry is to use just two beads either side so when it slides up to the hook so you've got a fish on there it's not going to actually put pressure straight onto the knot it's protecting the knot really it just saves it tangling up so you slide that one on both sides of the line so you can put as many beads on there as you want if you're fishing for place or what preference for fishing for flounders with beads or whatnot you can you can do that they're free running and then I'll get some hooks. This I'm using some size twos. Better way to buy them is in the box, much cheaper. And what I do is just tie a full blood knot. That's where you pass it through the loop after you create your first loop. It's back through the loop you just create. leave a decent sized tag end just so when you put the worm on there it keeps it more secure don't slide down the line and second hook just slide that up full blood knot again seven to eight sort of turns and uh, away you go Snip off there. Then you attach the lead to the lead link. There you go, Ragster. That's how you make a pulley wishbone. Hooks attach into the impact part of the lead. Just like that.
where it's been absolutely garbage here. I would still fires to get up here because you got, as you can see, we've got an opening there to get out to the main channel, but it's really not been very good. So what I'm thinking is, because this is a fishing video, let's go and get a fish for the cameras. Just move up, up to the wall where I fished before on the Gosport Ferry and put out a couple of rafts, definitely for the camera. I'm just gonna go down and fish the one single rod and then hopefully get a pollock out or something for lunch. Here we go, I've made the pilgrimage up here. As you can see though, it's a bit more like playing golf than fishing. Behind me, it's really, I'm wanting, it, wanting to put a bait uh, by the end of the wall here, as much as I can. But obviously with this new thing taking up half the space, you know, it's not very uh, wide, but I'd, this is a good place to get fish. So I'm gonna get some fish and we're gonna have them on camera. Just gonna fish the one rod. I was gonna fish a running ledger, but I'm thinking, make a cheap, losable, one up, one down with the up, with the hook being up, way, way up in the water after some pollock. And... I'm using a four ounce gripper because I'm going to be trying to put it as far up to the wall as I can. It's a bit more tidal there than at the other mark. So I do a double loop, which creates a loop and then I've just tied another knot in there to make it more like a boom. So a little bit of 20 pound line there, that's the bottom hook. So that fish is on the bottom like that. And way up here at the top is where I've put another short length of line, you know, about 15 inches possibly off there. So that fish is further up in the water where the pollock are feeding. So see how it goes. We're just fishing the ragworm at the moment. It's definitely when fishing is more like playing golf. Stand on the other side of the tripod so you can see what's happening. So it's really gusty still, although we're quite in a settled area, still, you know, a gust of wind will push me over. Keep it very steady. Pick your mark. Unfortunately, you have to commit to it. So here we go. That's okay. I'll try to put my thumb just on the line there, not to stop it, but to control the line so it doesn't bow off and create a big, Big bow in the line, which is a tangle over all of this stuff here. So I'm at the end of the piers, where, at the end of the wall here, where you want it. Settle this down into the tripod. And in fact, keep the rod tip right up here in the margins, quite high up, so it's at that sort of angle that that top, the top hook is going to be actually off the bottom of the seabed. That's just a waiting game. But this is one of them marks where I can pretty much guarantee that we're going to get fish here. So I'll just open that we can get into some pollock because I wouldn't mind a pollock. The pollock around here about that sort of size maximum from that to that. A couple of pound possibly. Great fun. And good to eat. <laughs> Here we go, no word of a lie, moved up to here. First cast and a nice little pouting. Very nice pouting, you know. Here we go. Nice little pouting, it's covered in little spots and sporting. I think they're sporting at the moment. Somehow he's hooked himself into the side. Hopefully it'll be all right, he's bleeding a little bit. I'm gonna to try to return this the best I can and without damaging it. We all know that pouting are quite a Quite a sensitive fish and they die quite easy, so the trouble being at the moment is it's low water, so I'm going to get it back and well, 
It's moving up, it just shows, doesn't it, really? There's plenty of fish up here. Definitely stunned it a little bit by putting it back, but it swam off, so fingers crossed and that, that we uh, saved it. I know that not all you are going to like this, but I know some of you live bait yourself. So I've just pulled in a little tiny pout in, really, really tiny. It's bleeding, it's never going to be returned, it's never going to swim off. So I've just set up a second rod real quick and I'm just going to free run. I've got no weight here, it's just a swivel, 20 pound bit of line, and a nice big hook there. And what I'm going to do attach this little pout in what I've just caught. He's looked really, he's still alive. So what I'm gonna do is pop them straight through the nose, just nick it through like that, and I'm gonna cast him out. I'm going to make this my last cast before it gets dark, going and have some dinner, being Sunday and all, but um, yeah, unfortunately that's all we've had so far, I should have really fished here from the on start, but uh, we had two pouting out here, if I get anything else on this last cast I'll show you in the video, but if not, until next time, tight lines and be lucky guys, innit?